Hey guys, Andy Sloan here. Hope you're having a phenomenal day, whatever you're up to. What I wanted to do is share with you a bit of a clip from one, well, from the seminar, the female fat loss seminar, which I gave the other night. Um, because I think this is pretty important, but it is important, okay? I'm going to talk to you about training for results, okay? We're going to speak to you about the hierarchy of fat loss, okay? So I'm going to tell you the 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 best things in terms of training for losing weight and losing fat and I'm going to tell you the, the things that should kind of be down at the bottom end of your spectrum in terms of what you, the kind of training you do in order to get a hotter body. So let's crack on. All right so in terms of your training and everything I mean it's, it's relatively important to kind of know how your body actually burns calories or, or where you know where your calories actually get burned okay. Basically about 60% of your calories that you consume in a day will get burned up through your resting metabolic rate so normal metabolism basically um, the thermic effect of food so actually how many calories it takes to break to, to break down a certain food that's actually going to equate to about 10 percent okay um, different foods have got a different thermic effect something like uh, haribo isn't going to require too many calories to, to break it down something like chicken is okay the more foods with a higher thermic effect the better i'll write a blog post on it soon but otherwise just get on google uh, and just google foods with high thermic effect and if you're eating a bunch of those foods you can be sure you're going to be burning as close to that 10 percent, maybe a bit more as possible so it's super important you know if you can burn all those calories for free just by digesting your food then that's it's going to make a difference it's going to help the next one's through activity as well okay so that's like your, your, your training or your workouts whatever you do okay so actually through something called thermogenesis all right so about 30 percent of those will actually come from from your, your activity there okay so look, what works for fat loss? What works for fat loss is is high levels of fat mobilization and high levels of oxygenation, uh, oxidation. Sorry, that's that's what's going to give you the accelerated fat loss. The things that are going to give you that, um, or certainly training methods, resistance training and interval based training. You notice I'm not talking about steady state cardio. We're going to come on to that in a minute. Okay, um, reduced carb intake is, if if we're talking kind of nutrition and water is massively important as well, um, among other things, of course, to, to actually help your liver out with with uh, you know the, all its processes isn't everything all right so hierarchy of fat loss and this is this is what you know this is massively important so to write it down or screenshot this and put it on your on your computer or whatever but hierarchy of fat loss number one the most important thing that you can do is get your nutrition right okay if your nutrition's not right the it, it, the training's it's not going to matter as much okay the training's not going to be as effective all right. If we're not getting that nutrition right, you're not going to get where you want to be. It's a hundred percent true. Okay. You can't out train a bad diet. Is the old cliche. Okay. Um, so just get that one right. Okay. It's so important that number two is also number one. All right. Nutrition. Get it right. Get it right. Get it right. Massive. 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 So number three, actually, activities that burn calories, which. At, while at the same time maintain or promote muscle mass and actually elevate your metabolism. Okay, number four. So next one, activities actually burn calories and elevate your metabolism. And then number five, activities that burn calories but don't necessarily maintain your muscle mass or elevate that metabolism. Okay, cool. Again, you might want to take a, take a note of that or just screenshot it or whatever. Okay, so if we're actually looking at training, the best types and most effective types of training for fat loss, okay, and these are scientifically proven, this is where it is at, all right? Number one, metabolic resistance training, okay? So, you know, this, you know, this could be, um, you know, some, some weights-based training in, like, circuit format. It could be, you know, the workouts we do at Fitness Camp, that's all about... Uh, MRT, um, and you know it could be your, your gym workout so long as you're doing that right. Okay, um, that's you know number one there also is strength based training. Okay, so hitting some weights. Okay, so stuff that's actually going to stimulate the, the the growth of muscle tissue, which is what you want in order to elevate your metabolism. So you're born in, burning more calories through the day for free massively massively important guys okay next one high intensity anaerobic interval training basically that's fast hard short stuff okay um high intensity work would be you know for instance doing a, a 20 second sprint with like a 40 to 60 second recovery you might do that on a bike or on the road or a step or whatever okay but that real high intensity stuff that's the next most important or, or next effect most effective one number three high intensity aerobic training that might be a, a flat out 5k run as fast as you can it might be a, a 40 minute bike ride where in that ride you do like four, five minute efforts, like really hard. It, it might be something like that. And then down the bottom of the list is low intensity aerobic training. 
Right? Low intensity aerobic training is not the thing for fat loss. It's not the number one thing for fat loss. It's got its place 100% definitely um, in terms of like health and fitness, but if you're looking to shed weight and, and get in great shape, it's not about that. Look at the body of a sprinter. How much uh, how much low intensity aerobic training does a sprinter do? And they, you know, they're some of the leanest people out there with the, you know, some of the mo their most incredible physiques out there as well. All right, so that low intensity aerobic training isn't the way forward. It's uh, you know, it's it's something that we might put in a program as like a, maybe like a stress reduction, maybe workout or something like that. Because someone likes running or you know going for a walk or jogging or something like that, we might chuck it in there because it's, it's it's good for that, and a lot of people like it. Um, but certainly that needs to be bottom of the pile. Don't base your, your workout program around number four, okay? But you know what? Most people start, if they want to lose weight, they'll go straight to number four. They'll actually, you know, they go to the gym and they'll do 45 minutes on a cross trainer, 20 minutes on a step, or 30 minutes on, a, on, the, on the treadmill. And they'll do that because they don't, maybe because they don't know or they're just worried about doing any of the other ones because they're well out of the comfort zone. And maybe if... They, the gym instructor might have told them about their fat burning zone, which is a load of bollocks as well, by the way. Just to throw that one out there. Um, it's more like a comfort zone, that one. All right. But look, this is how I want to lay it out for you. If you've got three or four hours spare per week to train, just do number one. Okay, just do that. If you're unsure what it is, then I've got a few videos on YouTube. You can have a look at workouts and stuff. Or, um, you know, obviously, if you're interested in training, you can give us a shout at some point, whatever. That's fine. But just Google it. All right. Um, if you've got four to six hours a week, do number one and number two. So number one will be the, the main thing. So you might do three of those workouts. You might do one or you know, maybe two sessions on number two. All right. So the anaerobic stuff. So the hard, high intensity interval based stuff. If you've got a few more hours or a couple of extra hours a week, then maybe you might want to chuck in number three as well. Okay, you might chuck in number three. So you might have like you know, your main workouts might be the three resistance workouts. You might have two of the uh, the, the high intensity sessions, and you want, might have one kind of higher intensity aerobic based workout. And then if you've got more than that, if you've got like you know eight plus hours a week, then you might want to chuck in some low intensity aerobic training as well. But for the most part, the backbone of your program wants to be that metabolic resistance training guys here that is that, that that's the big one if you want to get lean want to get great results all right and i think we've kind of talking about we've spoken about this already i mean basically the metabolic resistance training is as i said that's the stuff we do at my fitness camp and in the studio and, and we like we with our semi-private training and with our one-on-ones and on our ultimate body club which is a 12-week transformation program we run for, for men and women um two like separate programs which is pretty badass uh is there anything else we want to talk to you about we won't talk about that for now that's for another day so look hopefully that's been helpful for you guys um any questions you can just hit me up on facebook or something uh if you're interested in, in and maybe come and work with us then that you might emails turning up in your inbox pretty frequently so just hit reply um, and you can get in touch all right catch you guys soon bye bye